According to Ford, from 2017 to 2020, the previous generation Raptor cumulatively outsold Porsche's entire lineup of sports cars, and it also outsold the Corvette. But then, in 2020, Ram came along and said, we clocked the T-Rex at a 0-60 to 60 time of under 4 seconds, and Ford said, you said you've got a T-Rex? And Ram said, mm-hmm. And Ford said, say again? And Ram said, ha, huh, we have a T-Rex. And if you didn't get that intro, then you obviously haven't seen Jurassic Park. Either way, my name is Omar, and this, this is the 2022 Ford Raptor. Dr. Grant, my dear Dr. Sattler, welcome to Jurassic Park. So the first generation Raptor arrived on the scene in 2010 and it instantly became very popular. Not only did it become popular with those that Baja, but it also became popular with enthusiasts that just love speed. By the way, just to clarify, this isn't a real Baja vehicle. Actual Baja race vehicles are much crazier. This is more of like the vehicle you used to arrive at a Baja race. Although a stock Raptor did tackle the Baja 100, which is one of the toughest high performance off-road races ever. This thing can still kill a Baja course, and it is high performance, there's no doubt about that, but there is really nothing out there, and I mean nothing, not even the Ram TRX, that is capable of what this is off the pavement. The real Baja duties belong to the Raptor R, a race version of this road legal production version. But since the Ram TRX has now shown up to eat the Raptor's lunch, a road legal Raptor R is now on the way. See, in a world where you have a Ram TRX making 702 horsepower and all these electric pickup trucks that are starting to outshine the Raptor, Ford had to do something a little exciting. I mean, even Ford's new electric F-150 Lightning will beat this Raptor that I'm driving right now, which continues on with a twin-turbo V6. Rumor has it that the Raptor R will carry a supercharged V8 from the Mustang Shelby GT500. It will make more than 700 horsepower and it should put the giant TRX in its place. But that won't happen until later this year. So let's spend some time today with this V6 Raptor right here. Let me give you a quick tour of it. I'll give you a tour of the Raptorness part of it. I'll show you the outside and the inside and some F-150 parts. And then I'll give you my opinion on how it drives. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. All right, let's start off with the Raptor part of it. Yes, the Raptor is meant to be a high performance Baja racing off-road truck, but what really makes an F-150 a Raptor? A high performance off-road pickup is defined by its running gear and suspension and Ford says that the new Raptor has completely redesigned hardware. First up, you have a re-engineered 5-link rear suspension setup with more wheel travel. You also have longer trailing arms for better rough terrain positioning, a pen hard rod and 24-inch coil springs, the longest in its class. All that should give you a faster start off the line, better throttle response, more stability and more comfort and I'll talk more about that when I take it for a drive. For the third gen, the Raptor also gets the largest shocks ever with the upgraded front and rear Fox Racing internal bypass shocks with a new design that enables upward of 1,000 pounds of damping per corner at desert speeds. You also have a bigger skid plate right here on the front. You have recovery hooks on the front and the back and trail control along with one pedal drive. Now, as far as off-road clearance goes, that depends on the tires you have. For the first time ever, the Raptor is available with either 35 or 37 inch BF Goodrich all-terrain tires. The 35 inch tires will give you 12 inches of clearance with a 31 degree approach angle, a 23.9 degree departure angle, and a 22.7 degree breakover angle. The 37 inch tires on the other hand will give you 13.1 inches of clearance with a 33.9 one degree approach angle, a 24.9 degree departure angle, and a 24.4 degree breakover angle. As for the wheels, you have three different 17 inch designs to pick from with two being beadlock capable. All that is important if you're going to really go off-road. If not, don't worry about which tire size you get. Now, as far as towing and hauling goes, the Raptor has a max towing capacity of 8,200 pounds and a max payload capacity of 1,400 pounds. And of course, you have an upgraded exhaust with a trombone loop design with active valves, meaning you can configure the sound of the exhaust through a couple of different modes, including quiet, normal, sport, Baja. Let's take a listen to all four of them. Now 
Now you have a ton, and I mean a ton of drive modes to pick from with some really cool animations and graphics that appear in the gauge cluster. So you have the choice to pick between slippery, tow and haul, sport, normal, deep snow, Baja, and rock crawl. So yeah, you're basically prepared for any situation that the world can throw at you. Now, the other thing that makes a Raptor a Raptor are the looks. And while it may be a little difficult to tell the new Raptor apart from the outgoing one, it still has some pretty standout aspects. The new Raptor gets updated heat extractors and functional side vents that are inspired by the intakes of the F-22 Raptor fighter jet. Now that's pretty cool. But the real fun for 2022 is if you go for the 37 inch tires with the 37 performance package, you'll get a bunch of graphics that will let people know that you dropped an extra $5,200 and $50 on your Raptor. Interestingly enough, if you don't want all those graphics as a part of that package, you have the option to delete them. Not sure why you would want to do that because you look cooler and people will be like, whoa, he's so cool. He paid extra for his Raptor. The 37 performance package will also give you an upgraded interior. Now that being said, let's check out the inside because that's where you'll see most of the upgrades like you do on all new F-150s. Now I've already reviewed the new F-150, so check that out if you have some time, but the new Raptor gets everything from there. Like all new F-150s, this is a very, very comfortable place to be. These seats are like couches, so you can kick back and relax. And if you have the Bang & Olufsen sound system, you'll get speakers in the actual headrest. So that's pretty cool. Tech-wise, you're working with a beautiful 12-inch digital gauge cluster display as standard. This is one of the best gauge clusters in all pickups out there. The Raptor one here gets some Raptor-specific graphics and animations. You have a bunch of information over here that you can mess around with, including off-road info and much, much more. In the center, you have a 12 inch touchscreen display that houses the Sync 4 infotainment system. You have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. And you can also do a split screen here with whatever info that you want between navigation, music, truck features, and much more. Optionally, like on the regular F-150, you can get the interior workspace, which will allow you to fold down your shifter by hitting this button right here. And then you can flip over your center armrest and have a full workspace and get your work done while you're out in the desert without any internet connection. And once you figure out, hey, I can't get any work done out here in the desert, you can just flip the table back and hit that button again and bring your shifter back up and continue bashing some dunes. Now, if you hit this M button right here, that will put you into manual mode and you can use these paddle shifters to go through the gears. Nothing too exciting here, but I'm just pointing it out because these shifters are really solid and they're made of real metal. Other than that, you have some Raptor specific branding going on here, like the Raptor logo embossed in the front seats. You have orange trim here on the side and also on the steering wheel. Oh, and by the way, not sure if you know, the new Raptor has a very patriotic Easter egg hidden right here on the orange trim. This is actually an American flag. That's pretty cool. Legroom in the second row of the Raptor comes in at a massive 43.6 inches. I am about six foot tall. That is my seating position. As you can see, I still have plenty of room. And this is why I say you should buy a pickup truck over a crossover and SUV because you have more utility and way more room back here. Next up, let's take a look at the tailgate and the bed of the new Raptor really quick. You can get a power tailgate as optional, which I highly recommend because it will also give you a tailgate step. Now this just makes it easier for you to get into the bed without falling if you don't have any balance. So you can just hold this bar and step on the step and hop right in and you won't fall. Now this is very useful for someone like me that has no balance at all. I will just fall over if I stand on one foot. I have really bad balance. Adding the power tailgate also gives you the tailgate work surface, which just makes working at a job site a lot easier. You have a place to put your phone, your pens and pencils, and you can also put a drink right here. You also have rulers in inches and centimeters built right here into the tailgate. So if you need to measure anything, you can do that right here. And you also have cutouts for C-clamps. If you ever need to cut a piece of wood, you could just use the C-clamp, hold down a piece of wood and start sawing away. That's a great idea. And that's what makes the F-150 a solid workhorse. Like other F-150s, the Raptor can also be had with the Power Pro, Pro Power, whatever you call it, onboard system. The 3.5 liter EcoBoost in the Raptor here gives you two 120 volt outlets so you can plug in your power tools and get right to work. This will also allow you to use your Raptor as a generator as well. Go into the infotainment system and you can turn it on and use 2000 watts of power. That will allow you to run a television, a mini fridge, an electric heater, and a blender all at the same time. Now, one cool thing that the Raptor does get as standard is the zone lighting, which consists of a bunch of LEDs all around the outside. Let's say you're out camping in the desert at night and you happen to need some additional lighting. You can go into the infotainment system, activate zone lights from the screen right here, and then you can control which zone you want to light up one by one, or you can activate all the zones at the same time. That's very useful. Now, before I give you my opinion on how the Raptor is as a daily driver, let me point out a few random but important things that I'll have to show all of you. You have six cup holders, two in the front right over there, 
and then you have two in the center armrest in the back, and then you also have two right over there for rear passengers. So they are pretty thirsty and fully equipped. Here are what the keys look like to the Raptor. Pretty much a Ford key, but you do have a Raptor logo on the back. But in the front, you have lock, unlock, remote start, pop open your tailgate, and a panic button. But I'm really digging this Raptor logo. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. Solid. Charging game wise, you have a lot going on. You have a wireless charger right there, a USB A port and a USB C port. Also in the front, you're working with a 120 volt household outlet and a cigarette lighter charger. Those sitting in the back are also pretty well equipped. You have a USB C and a USB A port, a household outlet and a cigarette lighter charger right there. It is now time for an indicator and horn sound test, this time with the 2022 Ford Raptor indicator first. Pretty much the same Ford indicator. Now for the horn sound. Oh yeah, that is solid. I like it. All right, let's drive. Let's put this into Baja mode, put the exhaust in Baja mode, and that will give me a warning saying off-road use only. And yeah, I see a desert in front of me, why not? Let's open the rear window so you can hear that exhaust and go. Oh man, it sounds amazing. I don't know if you can hear it, but geez, and this thing moves. Again, this third gen Raptor is still powered by a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, making 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission. You now have more torque available at the lower end, and that will help push this from zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds, slower than the Ram TRX, but still insanely fun and insanely capable. See, here's the thing, Ford engineers that worked on the Raptor obsess over all the details and technical aspects that make this a high performance desert racer. Their obsession with perfecting the Raptor's off-road capabilities are almost as crazy as Porsche's engineers' obsession over performance. And that obsession with making this an off-road monster has translated into making this a very exciting daily driver. The suspension, the power, the handling, this has everything that you'll ever need. Yes, this doesn't have a V8. Yes, this doesn't make north of 700 horsepower, but this has all the power you'll ever need to let loose on everyday roads. It actually has all the power you'll need off-road as well. And that sound doesn't make me miss a V8 at all. My God. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but you can adjust everything from the steering wheel right here. You can adjust your steering feel, you can adjust the dampers and the exhaust sound right from the steering wheel. But pop this thing into normal mode and it will act well, normal. It won't go crazy. It won't scare you. It'll work with you. Fuel economy comes in at 15 miles per gallon city and 18 miles per gallon highway. I'm averaging after a few days of driving in sport and normal and Baja mode, a total of 13.7 miles a gallon. So this can do everything that your SUV and crossover can, but just in a much more cooler way. See, I don't know much about Baja. All I know is that I want something on road that's very capable, has a lot of utility and a lot of power under the hood. And this checks all of those boxes. If I get something like this, it wouldn't just be my weekend, you know, fun car. It would be my daily driver. I would drive this thing every single day. Of course, it would cost me a lot of money on gas, but that comes with owning something like this. The only issue I might see with this being a daily driver is that it is huge. It is very big, but hey, you would buy a Lexus LX or a giant SUV. I would probably buy this. This fits my style a lot more because a Lexus LX, a Mercedes-Benz GLS, an Escalade don't sound like that. But it is very expensive. Starting at around $69,000, this isn't cheap. I mean, no car is cheap these days. But just know that if you add on a bunch of packages and options, you'll be hanging out in the $90,000 club pretty easily, and that's pretty expensive. So. Let's break down the pricing really quick. So the Raptor sits between the Platinum and the Limited when it comes to pricing, starting at $68,675, but at that price tag, you get mainly everything as standard. You have all the Raptor hardware that you need to do some serious off-roading and desert racing. All the lighting game here is standard, including LED headlamps, LED daytime running lights, and the marker lamps, which is the coolest thing about the Raptor. 
you also get standard LED taillights. Although these rigid fog lights here are optional. I don't know why, they should be standard. Now, as I said earlier, you have the choice of picking between three different 17 inch wheels with two being beadlock capable. However, both of the beadlock capable wheels will cost you extra. You also get a power sliding rear window as standard, which is nice. However, a panoramic moonroof is optional, which I don't have here. Now this is pretty cool. The driver and the passenger seats are both power adjustable. Usually the passenger gets stuck with manual adjustable seats, but you have power adjustable seats right here in the Raptor. But if you want the cooler Recaro seats, you'll have to add on the 37 performance package. Now a cool convenience feature is that the front seats are both heated and cooled as standard. However, if you want a heated steering wheel or heated rear seats, both of those will cost you extra. Tech wise, you get the really cool 12 inch digital gauge cluster display as standard and the 12 inch center display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is also standard. However, navigation will cost you extra. Sound wise, if you want the Bang & Olufsen sound system, you'll have to pay extra. And a few other things here are extra, but I personally think they should have been standard, including a wireless charging pad. That should have just been standard along with dual zone climate control. Even rain sensing wipers are optional, but they should have been standard. And then a 360 camera and trailer reverse guidance and blind spot monitoring are all optional. I feel like those should have been standard in a pickup truck of this size. This thing is massive. I need those things to get around. Nonetheless, you do get a ton of driver assist tech as standard, including adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, pre-collision assist with emergency braking, reverse sensing, and then you have a bunch of auxiliary buttons right here that I just love hitting, even though I would probably never hook up anything auxiliary in here. But it's still cheaper than the Ram TRX, which starts at around $77,000 and can easily top $100,000, meaning the Raptor R should also cross the $100,000 mark. Yes, it is totally crazy that we live in a world where pickups cost over $100,000 and that people will pay that price. Take a look at the Rivian R1T, the GMC Hummer EV, and even the Ford F-150 Lightning. Those will top $100,000 pretty easily. The only difference between those EV trucks and this is that this is just badass. It has a Baja mode and a trombone exhaust that sounds like this. This is just much cooler either way. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. Peace.